We are taking another trip to space today, as well as taking a look at some strange and peculiar objects that are currently right here on our planet. From radiation proof bacteria and UFO sightings to supermassive black holes and a sort of comet asteroid combo, here is part two of the top 10 concerning objects that are not from this planet. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have radiation proof bacteria. In 2002, Russian astrobiologists hypothesized that a bacteria here on Earth may have actually evolved on Mars. Dionychus radioduranus is the most tough bacteria on Earth. It can withstand even the most extreme conditions such as cold, dehydration, vacuum, and acid, but the craziest part is that it is virtually radiation proof. These little microbes can withstand several thousand times the amount of radiation a human can withstand, as well as more radiation than any other bacteria on Earth. You can even find this bacteria on the inside of a nuclear reactor. Scientists did an experiment to see how quickly this bacteria could build up a stronger radiation resistance by zapping the bacteria with enough radiation to kill 99.9% .9 of it, and then leaving the remaining 0.01% to repopulate before zapping it again and repeating the process. It was concluded that it would have taken E. coli thousands and thousands of rounds to build up the same resistance that this hardy bacteria did in only 44 rounds. With this experiment and based on the dose of radiation they gave each bacteria, it would take millions and millions of years to get even close to that amount of radiation they gave the bacteria in one cycle. Since Earth just doesn't carry that amount of radiation, it has led some scientists to speculate that since Mars is virtually unprotected, and receives extremely high amounts of radiation, these bacteria may have evolved on Mars and gained their resistance in just a few hundred thousand years, and that they may have been flung off of Mars by an asteroid and then brought to Earth on meteorites. It certainly is just a hypothesis at this point, but really, how else can we explain this random super-powered bacteria that is unlike anything else on our Earth? In our number 9 spot today, we have the USS Princeton UFO. What's a space list without the mention of a UFO sighting? This one took place in 2004. On November 14th of that year, the USS Princeton noticed an unknown aircraft of some sort that was about 100 miles off the coast of San Diego. For two weeks prior to this, the crew had been tracking a strange flying object that was start out at around 80,000 feet before extremely quickly dropping to hover right above the Pacific Ocean. Black Aces Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate of Strike Fighter Squadron 41 went over in two fighter jets in order to kind of scope out the situation, and when they arrived, they saw what at first appeared to be churning water, while there was an oval shape just below the surface. After this, a white oval shaped object appeared above the water, but it had no markings on it. Like we're talking no windows, nothing that would indicate an engine, no wings, and the infrared monitors on the jets didn't pick up any sort of exhaust. The commander and lieutenant commander tried to intercept this strange aircraft, but it very quickly flew away and reappeared on the monitor 60 miles away. Like when I say quickly, I mean it was moving at three times the speed of sound and over twice the speed of the fighter jets. Like some Top Gun Maverick stuff. So faster than any kind of technology we currently have. We still don't know exactly what this was, but I'll tell you one thing. We definitely don't have that kind of technology. In our number 8 spot today, we have the USO. UFO to USO. Daryl Miklos is an explorer who took a deep dive following maps that had been put together by his friend and former astronaut Gordon Cooper. The map Daryl was using was initially made to help identify more than 100 magnetic anomalies in the sea. During one dive at a location within the Bermuda Triangle, where everything weird happens, he thought he was going to find an ancient shipwreck, but instead he found something that continues to stump researchers and Daryl himself. He came across a very strange structure that wasn't like anything he had seen before. This structure had long obtrusions which stuck out from the sides, and the whole thing was covered in coral, so whatever it is, it has been down there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Daryl has said, quote, There's identical formations in three different areas, and they don't look nature-made, they don't look man-made, 
Certainly nothing I've ever seen based on my experience and I have years of experience at doing this. We've identified multiple different types of shipwreck material. This doesn't match or look anything like that. People have started speculating that this structure may just be the remains of a crashed UFO. If it isn't that, then what else could it be? In our number 7 spot today we have the Antikythera Mechanism. The Antikythera Mechanism is an extremely mysterious discovery that has stumped researchers ever since since it was found. This artifact was found 150 feet below the surface of the Aegean Sea in a shipwreck and it is the oldest kind of computer ever recorded as it was dated back to the 7th century BCE. The author David Childress likened the finding to if they had found a jet plane in King Tut's tomb. That's how bizarre this discovery really was. Due to the complexity and oddity of the finding, alien enthusiasts have believed for quite some time that it may have been technology that was passed down from some sort of superior being, so aliens. When the artifact was recreated in order to learn about the mysteries it holds, the mechanism was able to calculate the position and running time of each planet. How would they have been able to create this without the use of sophisticated astronomical tools? I'm not saying that this is like concrete proof of alien life, but I don't know. There's just got to be something else at play here. In our number 6 spot today we have fossilized microbes. This is a piece of evidence that came from 1996 and it is said to have come all the way from Mars. 25 years ago scientists said that they had potentially found what appeared to be fossilized microbes in a lump of Martian rock. This rock was hypothesized to have come off of Mars after some sort of collision that the planet had and then just casually floated around in space for some 15 million years before it ended up in Antarctica in 1984. You know just the kind of thing that happens in space. Once the rock was found and analyzed, it was found that it contained organic molecules and small specks of mineralized magnetite which can sometimes be found in the bacteria here on earth. Once viewed with an electron microscope, there were signs of bacteria found. Of course, with anything like this, there will always be skeptics and some have claimed that the magnetite wasn't that similar to those found in bacteria and some claim that the signs of nanobacteria were just grown in a lab. I'm not a scientist. Scientist, nor have I seen this Mars rock, so I obviously can't tell you who is telling the truth here, but what I can say is that neither of the people who believe this rock came from Mars or those who claim that it's fake can prove their point without any kind of doubt, so I'll just let you draw your own conclusions on this one. In our number 5 spot today we have cork gluon plasma. So basically scientists believe that right after the big bang there was this sort of really hot goopy kind of a substance that was created and it was made up of all different kinds of matter. Everything is moving around at the speed of light, it's hot, it's fast and it's like cosmic soup. Ok, so experts at the Large Hadron Collider which is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator wanted to recreate this space soup. You know, part of the whole trying to solve the mysteries of the universe's origins kind of thing. When they did this and got the machine to recreate this, they ended up recording the highest temperature ever. Apparently this soup was measured at 9.9 .9 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. We obviously can all understand that that is insanely hot, but just how hot? Well, that is 366,000 times hotter than the center of the sun. In our number 4 spot today we have energetic cosmic rays. Energetic cosmic rays are described as high energy protons and atomic nuclei that move through space at nearly the speed of light. There are some that originate from supernova, but there are some that originate from outside of our galaxy and those ones have scientists wondering where they are coming from and what the source of them is. As these cosmic rays flow into our solar system, their paths are bent by the magnetic fields of both the sun and the earth. Upon impact with earth's atmosphere, these rays produce a shower of secondary particles. Some of these particles do end up reaching earth, but most are intercepted by either the magnetosphere or the heliosphere. The strongest cosmic rays are extremely powerful and they can have energies of over 100 million times greater than a man-made collider. If you're wondering why you should care about this space mystery, it's because 
these things have the power to cause our digital systems to crash, and in our ever increasing digital world, that could cause some major disruptions to our life. That is why we care about how many of their origins remain a complete mystery that has scientists stumped. And also, because shouldn't we just know where these things that are bombarding Earth's atmosphere are coming from? Concerning is definitely the word I'd use, but honestly, what part of space isn't concerning? In our number three spot today, we have Elst Pizarro. This is a weird little object that has been stumping scientists since it was first discovered in 1979. So basically, asteroids and comets tend to be fairly easy to tell apart. I mean, an asteroid is a solid lump of rock and metal, and you tend to find them more in the inner solar system, especially in the asteroid belt. And on the other hand, we have comets, which are usually more icy objects that travel from the outer areas of the solar system, and sometimes when they react with the solar radiation, they have those famous tails. So when Elst Pizarro was first discovered, it was orbiting in the asteroid belt, so it was classified as an asteroid. Flash forward to 1996 and closer examination shows that it had a tail like a comet. At first, experts thought that perhaps the tail was a result of some sort of collision, which is not uncommon for asteroids, but when the brightness and structure of the tail changed over time, it became clear that it was more of an ongoing process. Basically, this object showed signs and trademarks of both asteroids and comets, and it truly was a baffling discovery. Basically, the discovery of this object led to an entirely new classification active asteroids. In our number two spot today, we have the fastest black hole. The biggest black hole that we have found so far is said to weigh about 40 billion times the mass of our sun, or about 20 times the size of our solar system. That's so scary. That's so big! Some of the outer slowest orbiting planets in our solar system, like let's take Neptune as an example, orbits at a speed of about 165 Earth years. This huge black hole, the one that's 20 times the size of our solar system, yet it orbits once every three months. Do you know how fast that is? Neptune is considered slow at going 12,148 miles per hour. The outer edge of this black hole is moving at half the speed of light. The crazy thing about black holes this large though, other than how fast they're moving apparently, is that it is believed that they wouldn't necessarily kill you right away if you were to fall into one. In fact, it's thought that you would actually survive. You just wouldn't be able to escape to tell the tale because of that whole nothing escapes the black hole thing that they all have going on. In our number one, one spot today we have supermassive black holes. Speaking of black holes, why is there a supermassive black hole at the center of most galaxies? We know that this is often the case, but we just can't quite figure out why. Every galaxy's supermassive black hole ranges in size, and we know that a stellar black hole forms from a supernova when the core of the star implodes, but we don't know how a supermassive black hole is formed. Because of the fact that the center of galaxies is where a lot of matter is boxed in, it could happen that supermassive black holes form from a cluster of regular stellar black holes, which all ended up merging together because they were in a tight, confined space at the center of the galaxy. There are other theories as well, such as the possibility of these supermassive black holes being formed during the Big Bang. What I'm trying to get at is, we don't know how these things are formed, or why they are in the center of most galaxies, or even if there were supermassive black holes before the galaxies even existed. Maybe one day we'll find out, but this might just be one of those mysteries that is destined to stay a secret. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.